Thanks for staying with us. So, in the papers earlier, we read um, about protests going on in Ibadan. Yesterday, people took complain about the state of the nation, food prices. And then we took our minds back to uh, a few months ago when a journalist, um, Ayodeji Bakari, uh, who had seen our president, I think it was at the, um, in New York. So he had that opportunity to see President Bola Tinubu. And it's, it was, it was, it, he said he asked the president to use cassava in the uh, commodification of the Naira. That was his own advice. He had one second opportunity to see the president. And he gave him that advice concerning the use of cassava. So our question this morning is, let's just imagine that you and I are in front of Mr. President this morning. What would you ask him to do? What would you tell him? Uh, what feedback would you give to him today? We're going to open our phone lines tonight. Just to call in. If you had the opportunity to see Mr. President this second, what's the first thing you would tell him? Uh, especially because he has promised us a renewed hope, asking Nigeria to trust him to take us through um, the, the, this season. Interestingly, um, Sheila posted something quite interesting. Also, he said that he would rather follow a leader that is going to take, like, like Moses, taking us through this wilderness, knowing that um, the future uh, is, is bright than somebody who is going to let us remain in Egypt, Egypt. eating uh, food and wine and enjoying at the expense of our children's future. You know, so of course people have already debated that, but the truth is that some are saying these are hard times. Others are saying let us manage. Others are saying I cannot manage. What's your own perspective? What would you tell Mr. President if you have the opportunity to see him this morning? You can call us on zero eight one. 0764-1679-0902-416-3440. You can also tweet to us at TVC Entertainment underscore. would love to hear your views. One of the beautiful things about this show is that we're able to express our views um, undeterred by anyone, and even callers can call in to share their own authentic views with us so we can learn from each other. So we'd love to hear. Let me start with Nima. What, what, what's, what's your... What's your first thing you tell Mr. President if you have the opportunity? Okay, um, I think he's already on track if those things work. I would love to live in a country again where the refineries work. I was a little girl when my dad joined the NNPC then and he had first applied to join the Wari refinery and then he got appointed to join the Port Harcourt branch of the NNPC and he turned it down because he thought raising uh, Muslim young girls in Port Harcourt would be tough. My, well, his cousin proved him wrong. My cousins in Port Harcourt even stronger Muslims than I am. And so he took the one that later worked out for Lagos. But I remember then in the house, his passion for the oil sector, the talks that I heard, how the refineries were working, how you know Nigeria can do this and do that. And now everybody's just mom. It's like we don't even know that refineries, my kids don't even know whether there's a refinery, talk less of whether they work. So I'd love to see a time where the Nigerian crude is refined in Nigeria again. That's one thing I believe will bring back dignity faster. Mm. Faster than any, any you know, foreign direct investment that we're looking, looking for. for. This is what God has blessed us with more. In every region is strength. This one we can control. Before we turn to Congo where our resources are always taken out, we are the ones even taking our own yeah. out. I'd love to see that happen. Okay. I know it's possible. With a, you know, a first, one foresighted person, that can be our reality again. So okay. I would really plead with him, whatever you can, you know, channel into that. But then, just as I'm think, saying it now, I'm thinking it okay. again, that there are people whose businesses mm. thrive on, you know, vandalizing pipelines, yeah. Yeah. vandalizing, you know, government. Pipelines. And I'm wondering, who will lead this country? Mm. Even if you had this beautiful dream and you finally see a refinery per state working, Somebody will still, still be dealing sabotage. with still limits. Yeah. You know, and those people will be the ones in the media and on social media saying, it cannot work. God <laughs> forsaken, it has ended. Okay, let me, let, let me come to you, Marianne. Yeah. What, 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 yeah. what, what would you tell Mr. President? Um, so for me, it's food, um, agriculture. And, um, you know, like we've always discussed here, the issue with Nigeria is not the scarcity of policies or in brilliant minds or conversations at tables is really in implementation. And for me, corruption is our, is our biggest struggle right now. And so if, if the president can make it his duty to be so, um, you know, to be very strong on punishing 
mm. people who are saboteurs of government policies, saboteurs of, gov of Nigerian growth, I feel that will go a long way in allowing for these policies to be implemented well. These, we have them. There's nothing new we're going to tell the government. They know. Yeah. They have been abroad. They've come back. They, even within the country, they understand our local issues. They get it, but there's constant... We've allowed saboteurs, we've allowed um, on, um, dishonest people mm. to be the ones that are leading the way. We need to call them out and punish them. It does not matter who they are, who they are related to, who they know, who their, um, net, their, their yeah. circle is. If we can do that, we we'll see a big change, not only in, the, in agriculture, we we'll see it in our education, we we'll see it in health, we we'll see it everywhere. That's one thing I'll say to him. Yeah. Please, agriculture. Sir, okay. what's one thing that you think, or we'll come to other things, but let's start with one first. Okay, so if I was to meet with the president face to face, I'll first of all congratulate him, you know, on having to make tough decisions in very bad times. You know, that's the first thing. But my first question, and this has been something of an object of interest for me, is uh, what has been done with the monies that have been recovered from this subsidy that we are all suffering for? Can somebody just explain, someone with the authority to explain, tell us what has been done with the monies that have been recovered? Because a few months after the removal of the subsidy, it was reported that Nigeria has saved over a trillion, trillion almost that's billions of yeah. dollars from just the removal of the subsidy. So is there any plan for the monies? What is the plan? How is it going to help us? That's just the major thing. Then I have other, but that's my so number that one. So I mean, the governors will tell you that they're receiving more allocation. So I say maybe some, some, some money, say, I'm, I'm not speaking for government, I'm just saying that maybe some of the extra money that the government, government, governors are receiving could possibly be money saved from the subsidy. We don't know. But we'll find out from government exactly tell where us. this money is. For me, I think it's more of... Um, I, I, always, I, I strongly believe in the power of communication. Yeah. And I think that the government is not doing enough to communicate consistently. So we have um, Ngalale, that's Ajiri, who comes out once, maybe once every two days or three days with press briefings or telling us press releases, which is great. But because of where we are, and I think you said something earlier that where we are today, we need constant communication yes. at all levels. All levels. So you identify different young people or different, at different cadres of society grassroots, middle class, low class, every level, diaspora within Nigeria, you identify them, connect with them, and you are constantly engaging them, giving exactly. them information because they are going to be the ones spreading information because exactly. people at the grass don't understand subsidy yes. issues, eh, we don't have money, eh, <laughs> clinical dollar is floating, all that is grammar. Mm. The, the, the Yasika doesn't want to understand. All she knows is that my, the plantains that is bringing plantain for me is that it's expensive. Exactly. She doesn't understand that it's the diesel to transport it from the farm to Lagos that is causing these increments for her. She doesn't, doesn't get that. So we need information. Yes. Government must be able to communicate at all levels, top to bottom, consistently in different languages. Yes. Put it in Pidgin, put it in Togo. Yeah, what's that one? Uh, what's that one I mean? The Egun. <laughs> put it in all the language across the nation, in Hausa, in, 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 in all the languages. Let people understand the issues so that when, when, when saboteurs who hate Nigeria are trying to twist the narrative, they have other um, narratives out there with, with, which is, they can see the truth yes. from the lies. Yes. Because, yes. I think right. they are really trying. But I think people wait to hear what they would like to hear. So okay. Some people are sitting there waiting, God, uh, using, waiting for them to prove, something to prove them right. So wait, some people are just saying, let this government fail so I can tell you I told you so. Some people mm. are already gloating online, enjoying it, mm. saying, you know, the hardship and all of that. Yes, they don't think of how they're contributing. We took the dollar and pound exchange issue. You know, we are the ones needing these ex external things mm. that cost us. But no, that's not, I'm not doing anything. Am I doing anything? It's only government, you know? Some people are in the business of vandalism. I see them. We see them on the roads in, in, in certain areas in Nigeria. In Lagos here, we see them. Yes. They thrive on these businesses. They, they, they throw big parties without resources, without a, a, you know, a, um, explainable sources of mm. wealth. Yes. And they enjoy it. And they too call out government. Every policy this government has made mm. for the educated, you would yeah. expect that this would you know, right. work. Yeah. But Nigerians will find a way to make it counter work so that yeah. they can say, I yeah, told you that cannot work. Do the one I said. 
Let me take this no, call. Let's on. continue to, to subsidize dollar. Demola, thanks for calling. You're live. You're welcome. Quite a week. I need some volume, please. Quite a week. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Me, yeah. Um, look, we are an import dependent nation. And it's so obvious that import people actually um, warehouse wealth in foreign currency. My mm -hmm. own suggestion to the President is that, number one, let these people pay in their money. We don't care wherever. You. Look, a man on fire cares less about his uh, nakedness. Bring your money in. Give a margin, a time frame. Look, between January to June this year, pay any money you want to pay in. Pay any money you want to pay in. Bring the dollars into the system. When there is plenty of dollars in the system, there is money for a change. Because the only reason you amount um, dollars or get foreign currency is for international transactions. After June, anybody caught or seen having dollars over 10,000, apart from the bridge change that has a limit of 50,000 and 100,000 dollars, will be prosecuted. Then if you bring in your money, you are free to trade in whichever um, commodity you want to trade in. There's gold. Convert your wealth to gold. And nobody's going to challenge you. I know they will have issues with anti gap um, agencies um, across the world that they are allowing people to pay illicit money or where they are not questioning where they got money from. But as I said before, a man on fire cares less about their nakedness. The economy is on fire. And we know people are actually hiding wealth in form of foreign currency, which yeah. is supposed to be for international trade. Yeah. So look, give them a time frame. Look, no, okay, we are not questioning your, your source of uh, wealth. Just bring the money to the system. Because even though the time the United States we leave a How do you find them? <laughs> but but, but uh, look, Demola, how do you find them? They are keeping it in their in their in their soccer ways. They are keeping it in their wardrobes. They are keeping it in their basements in Nigeria. How do you find them? Beautiful question. The same way, Mario, prepare a meal and said, everybody come and eat. People in their houses to come out. Mm. Why they are hiding is because they cannot come out to the open. But tell them, look, now, no more hiding in the closet. Don't worry, we're not going to question it. The SEC is not going to go after you between January and June. Mm. Okay, gotcha. Between January it. and June, nobody's going to go after you. Okay. But after June, if you are still such uh, yeah. wealth, you will be prosecuted. And okay, I got you June, now. There will be a standing... Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you. So he's saying that between now and June, mm. if you are a criminal, you've been hiding, just bring out... We will not prosecute. The FCC will not go after you. Just bring that money into the system. We will not chase you. We will not ask you where your money came from. Just put after June, then we we'll begin to prosecute whoever we find that is still holding or holding these dollars because we need that money in the system for people who are doing legitimate business to be able to produce and export. Okay, that's one way of looking at it, mm. but I don't think that many of the people that we're dealing with is not those that are putting money in soaking ways or basements. They are money people that have a part of the system and have found a way to acquire this wealth and keep it and use it for their businesses and different things. Um, so, you know, when I was talking about corruption earlier, it's not that we don't know who they are or that we cannot find them. It's because we're so concerned about chasing the small fries. We don't want to deal with the big guys because in one way or the other, we're all involved, you know. And so those are the sort of people we should go after. They're the ones that have the wealth passing through them, their businesses and whatever it is that they do. These small fries, it's just... Today, you catch them, you lock them up. Tomorrow, you know, the, the main corruption is still going, going on. And that one thing with money is that you know where it's headed. You know where it's going. You know who has it at what point. When we are serious about finding those people, we will do that. So, also, go ahead. Also, also the, the, the level of corruption from, you know, what has brought us, gotten us here is that we don't have our the dollar reserves anymore. We reserved in dollar, and somebody single-handedly benefited a group of people. That's a fact. I'm presently investigating and also trying. You know, the, the accusations, the allegations are so huge that we don't even know which one to try first. We don't want to go and try for lesser one, the person escapes a bigger one. It's huge, and, but this has gotten us here. Aside revealing it little by little, maybe from a private investigator hired by the president, <laughs> they see a proper trial. Yes. Trace I was going to go to judiciary. Every single person. So yeah. it's not, no, this starts with the agencies. Yeah. The AFCC and all of their assets. Getting an airtight, watertight water case. Watertight case that, you know, recovers all of these monies. And just as uh, Uso had said earlier, 
let's say the money is being put back in the system to better our lives. Yeah. You know, this can encourage people to call out what is wrong for what is wrong rather than yeah. say, I make myself thief my own. It depends on how huge yeah. the thief. Because if this person gets away, but thief, gets oh, but thief where? Tip the one way go get you lawyers. You know, we know these things. Let's 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 uh, take Jimo. Jimo is calling from Burger. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Go ahead. You're live. Um, I might be very I'm wondering. I want to find out. This first one, I don't mind. Should be private, sir. And then issue of the EFTC. You know the one side. It should be released. I can't hear Mr. Jimmy. Did you hear him? He says that he doesn't support. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. It's, it's fine, Mr. Jimmy. Go ahead, Nima. He says he doesn't support the refineries being fixed or building of refineries by government. He thinks that it should be privatized. Okay. Go ahead. The business okay. of refineries should be privatized. But that example, I always disagree. Because when we make the example of when Dubai picked up and when Saudi picked up, we, we sit comfortably and pretend as if it's not government that controls refineries in these countries. You know? If it is not owned, it will be controlled by, with a capitalist mentality. Then go to the refinery now. We cannot even determine whether it's refining the oil for us it's, or it's exporting the it's oil. Too early, it's too no, early. No, no, yes. no. But it's a debate that we yes. can't win. Yes. You can't go and just use politics to control. Yeah. It's messy. And so when Nigerians come out and say, no, it should be privatized, it's like it's just, just going to make our lives better. Because one capitalist like will decide tell me uh, whether he will, 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 will tell chief for us. What are your options? No, but, no, but they said government is not going to do it. Right, we are yeah. not closing the doors to that option. When the debate for yeah, subsidy removal was money. done under Jonathan, um, Sanusi was the CBN governor at the time, and he's made an example of what the cost of a refinery was. And then I kept wondering why the government subsequently not even think of building one. Why did Obasanjo Sanjo himself not come in as the first president for the democracy oh, well, and build one? Why are we here? So we know those so we know there's vandalism. We know those how, how, what happened. Today, right now, what we need right. is a functional the refinery. Asking, and the refinery forward. sector can so generate come in. power. Yes. Let's ask each, each state mm. to so have that. a refinery and generate funds. Let me take this call from Corey. Thanks for calling Corey. They are blessed with crude. And it can be in any state. Yeah, they have the money. You're live. Go ahead, please. I don't, don't know about states. I just can't, can't hear you. I'm coming for the first time. Go ahead. Welcome, sir. Yeah. If it's actually, I believe there is one particular problem with the way we handle issues in Nigeria. Okay. The two policies that created this big problem that we have today are uh, the subsidy remover as well as the floating of the Naira. Those two policies are good. The problem is we are, bring, we are canceling those policies because we believe some people are making money out of it and there is a lot of corruption in it. So if we say because of that corruption, then we are stopping those policies, then we are like using the normal Yoruba language saying you are, be, you are using the head as an antidote for headache. It is not the right thing to do. For example, as of today, they are still stealing crude oil from the source. Can we stop exploring food because of the past limit? Okay. I think the government needs to do something more to see how we can see. We have a lot of security, yes, and the rest. I can take out the problem associated with these two policies. Very logical policies because in our place, we have the We don't produce enough. In we don't have to do production. So why on hand could we have made this policy stop? This is the first of my right. And they're giving out of it. So my own thing is, they still have to rethink. Until we are able to produce that power, and minimum so on, and all the necessary uh, instruments, like have security, people can go to government. Those policies are something they need to uh, and measure their control. So that the kind of money we lose, as a sort of rule that, I mean, using the opportunity to steal. Right, Once those are not there, Nigeria will be fine. All right. Let's take a few comments on social media. Okay, these comments are from the earlier conversation. Um, we have. Um, so, sorry, I can't pronounce your name. It says that um, the solution to the issue of nurses living is simple. Ask why migration rates for nurses in Ghana are low. Graduate nurses earn over 400k monthly presently, while in Nigeria it's as low as 100k for 150k. Have you also asked why nurses in the oil and gas sector in Nigeria don't seem to leave the country? 
these nurses earn over half a million naira monthly in a good environment. Okay, he disagrees that it's not just a trend. It's act he says it's actually difficult to leave your country and everything behind for a lot of people. Be uh, between 40k a month and a real job, many feel they have no choice, but the federal government won't tackle this, just force them to stay. Um, Ogumola Emmanuel says, claiming the medical education is subsidized is a flawed illogical argument. Okay. It says all lecturers are in different or differently employed. Students pay the same fees. Explain subsidies. Are you thinking of the countless unemployed and underpaid nurses? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he also says that Nigerian nurses are probably the most beleaguered people. Right. Most, uh, make, most make do with small jobs in small clinics paying 40k a month yeah. while fasting and praying to get into the primary mm. health care mm. state or federal. Then you hear what a primary health care pays them and you shake right. your head. True. Um, and he also says food export is a good thing. That's how you earn a do dollar. But during a food crisis, government can restrict export. Explain this to farmers and traders and that is a temporary measure and exports can resume later so we don't reduce the capacity. Let me take this call. Good morning, you're live. I'm calling from Sapia, I'm the first time caller. Welcome to the show. So, what I'm saying is that each of us is the president this month, what we see. Yeah. If I met with the president this month, the first thing I would tell you is to open borders. Because we are planting rice in Nigeria. We are selling rice for 80, 70 thousand. How much is it said for the rice? It's not dollar that makes Nigeria rice be very expensive. So we are doing ourselves. We are so very wicked to ourselves. We are to be selling Nigeria rice for 70 thousand. Thank you. So what happens to those who are Nigerian farmers and saying that if you open the borders, you are competing with me? Mr. Joseph, are you still there? So if I'm a yes, farmer, so if you open the borders... Why would they be selling Nigeria rice for 70000 You see the dollar that makes Nigeria rice is expensive. Okay. So instead of attacking me as a farmer, a Nigerian farmer for 7000 naira, you open the borders to compete to further to with give, me. Yeah, uh, to compete with him. So, he, he thinks that the um, prices that they are give, they're giving it does not make sense because... So if it doesn't make not, sense, why can't we help the farmer to help him make sense instead of opening the borders to compete with him? So no, it money? makes sense yeah, now. For, because yes, because for the farmers, many of the inputs, we heard the farmer talk about yesterday, many of the inputs you still have to import, and that is also dependent on exchange rate. So it's not, the farmer is not being wicked. It's just the situation of things, you know. Mm. And then to now get, open the borders, and then indiscriminate competition. So I think one of will... the solutions was well highlighted by one of the ladies yesterday. We can provide the seedlings. We can also provide the transportation and subsidize, you know, we've subsidized agriculture uh, largely, but transporting finished goods down have not been subsidized. And all these unnecessary and captured taxes along the road all the way to Lagos can be also removed. That will reduce mm. transportation. You're going to say something as well? I thought you were going to say something. Let me take this call from Yakub. You're live, Yakub. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Long time, let me, Yakub. Let me, let me start from where the uh, Kishani has just talked now. All the, all the lorries and the buses that are carrying the food items from Okiobo, mm -hmm. from Mayoyo uh, and Axis down to Lagos State, they were facing a lot of discrimination. Why? Why? Because I've seen it. There are some of my friends. This guy normally brought food from our, our town, from my village down to Lagos, especially Yam. That was the day, I think last three weeks. This, this, this lawyer was arrested by CIO. Why? Because they say they claim that he has no form paper and all that. And then they arrest the boss. They took the boss to their office, including the tuba of Yam. So what happened? Can't you let this tuba of Yam get to the end user? Even if you want to arrest the boss, you can be able to tell this guy when you collected his driver license, the man should be able to come back. If he doesn't come back, we are trying that the school item is, is highly caught in the market today. Mm. Then you arrested the boss, you took the boss to, the, to your office, which included the goods. And then some of that guys, or people including police, they will arrest the lorry with the tomatoes that you know is a perishable. And then they get spoiled at any time. So they say the owner of the tomato will not be given to beg them a lot of money because they don't want to lose the goods. So, the, 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 last, the last color that says that the government should open border. Yes, Morayo, if you go to Adilete, there's a place called Adilete, close to Ibiroko. I have a custom living beside my house. I have this custom. Why do you guys arrest 
All this right. You know the reply this guy gave to me. He mm. said they cannot settle, they will be arrested. And then the money they were set to in a village artist and then in Europe artist. Where is this money going to? It goes to individual pockets. Yeah. And then how much is the local right? The, the local right you have here. Do we have enough? So the government to open the border, let the right, right. come in. So that Thank if you put this and uh, if you put this in market, everything will come down. Thank you very much, Jacob. Let me take this comment from Mr. Francis. He says, it is, it is clear that this administration lacks understanding or knowledge. We can borrow to start a self-training program for transformation. As my proposed pro program of transformation, Nigeria will initiate rapid industrialization. Growth rates will be over 10% for decades. Growth will be in our capabilities for solving problems, including production, not just GDP growth. According to him, there are precedents. Japan mobilized all their citizens for integrated learning, 1886 to 1905, 20 years, and became industrialized. China mobilized all their citizens for integrated learning in 1949. The nation became industrialized in nearly in, in early 1980s. Industrialization is about building knowledge, skills, and capabilities. When they started, the results will be very evident immediately. So he is saying that what Nigeria needs is industrialization, not so much of um, uh, just exporting. But yes, we need to build factories, manufacturers, we have a 10, 20 year plan of turning Nigeria to a manufacturer's hub so that we can then begin to um, export. That's some, some of these comments here. Also, I'd really like to see, you know, provision of um, free, if not uh, almost free, acres of land for those interested in farming. Move all the bottlenecks that the person has to think of. You know, if you want to do farming now, you don't own outrightly a, a portion yeah, of land, farmers. you might just be farming at a loss. So farming is not one guaranteed way of making money. It's not a quick fix to making money. So provide, you know, some of this available yeah. land instead of just turning everywhere to cities and everything. We need food. We have arable lands. We cannot continue to build uh, clubs and, and uh, residents on them mm. while thinking uh, people will find a way to feed. Okay, yeah, let, let, let me take this call. Come to UBC, um, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's Ibrahim from Satellite Town. Thanks for calling. Good morning. Good Excellent. morning, sir. You're live. Good morning, ma. Uh, if I were to meet the president, what would I tell him? Yes. Uh, I would like to. Uh, what I would like to tell him is that uh, he, he should consider industrialization. He should consider our industries instead of building more or starting more high institutions. Those money can be used to help, you know, our industry so that um, the graduates that goes out, mostly the science students and the um, engineering students, they can begin to work there. And that would bring maybe forex for, for Nigeria. That's the only thing I would like to tell you. As regards farming, I do farm, but in the last 10 years, I've never made the same good day. But what I console myself with is that, okay, I mean, I'm feeding the nation. Yeah. So thank you. I hear many nights. Nice. Okay, yes. From, you know, the responses we're getting, it just shows that there's just so many issues. You know, there's not mm. one that is the most important. Mm. Everyone, every issue is the most important right now. I was going to say, is it insecurity? Is it about food prices? You know, is it health? Is it education? Everything is at the very top right now. And um, I don't think I envy, you know, I don't envy those in government. Yes, I don't envy those in government. And, but this is also feedback to government that this, there's no time to play. That this is serious work and you have to give your best for even to get a little praise from people because people are suffering. Yes, we, we, remember, we would also blame past administrations for not doing what they were meant to do. But today, this is where you are. And so you have to take up the job of making things better for Nigerians. I have, I have Bonnie. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just, I agree completely with what um, mm -hmm. Miriam has said. The way forward is to not, we can't keep concentrating on what the past governments have done. The way forward now is get the people to understand that we don't understand what the hardship is about and how we are going to get them or all of us out of it. Like Maria said, information is key, information is very, very important. and. The, the most important thing you can tell anybody who is suffering right now is that it's going to get better, and this is how it's going to get better. This is the way we are going to make it better. 
and then there's, there will be protests will stop. There will be a significant drop in protests across the country, and people will begin to understand and reckon with the government. Let me take this call. Good morning. You're, um, you're live. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Thank you, Good morning. Good morning, sir. I agree, the ladies. Yes. If I if I'm opportunity to make with the president, I will not say anything to do. But I'm directing my point to the governor. Mm -hmm. More especially the governor of the state. Okay. The last journey I traveled to Anambra State. Upon entering the news, we made almost 24 checking points. And those checking points are not manned by, by police or soldiers, they are manned by civilians. Do you know what they're after? Produce. And then they keep on frustrating the owner of that produce to pay them incentive to pay them money. So this man that is carrying all these no goods, things like tomatoes, uh, vegetables, and carrot and green beans, how much will he make inside that very goods that he's carrying? That you are demanding what good amount of money from him. In fact, it looks to us a certain taking point that we, the passengers, the few passengers who have to come down for the bus, and we pick up sick. We say, do your worst. This man will not pay anything. Why are you charging him? You're extorting money from him. So now, upon reaching where you go with those produce that you are collecting money from, you have to, earn, you have to add money to recover what he spent on the way. So I am also asking the government to look into why, why, why is it that whenever promise is coming to the state, some people will be sabotaging, trying to collect the, the collect, trying to collect money or to extort money from the from the from the, from the, from the owners. So please let them look into it because those those don't check in from more especially anyway. I, I don't understand them. I don't understand some of them are maybe the, the last the last one even even end up carrying life. We have to carry stick on the ground. Do your know work, this man will not pay anything. So please we've made the government look into it. Thank you. Okay, so um, Francis is still talking here. He says, economists and their associates are the major cause of economic crisis in Africa, Latin America, and some parts of Asia. They have been pontificating on issues they know nothing about. Economists and their associates know nothing about promoting sustainable economic growth, industrialization, and development in an economy. Economists know nothing about the fundamental variables of employment, production, and inflation, yet they claim to know and have been fraudulently promoting poverty in many regions of the world. He's suggesting that all the economic plans, all the economy, what the economists are saying, is not going to actually um, provide proper growth. What we need is industrialization, hard industrialization to be done immediately, and all these indices that is being used for economic growth is not likely to happen because it's not about GDP growth, but it's more about what we can do to produce and begin to employ Nigerians to manufacture. Mm. Let's take a few more comments. Go ahead. I, I am aware that, you know, to uh, encourage trade and exports, there are many things that the government is doing. But right now, what they're focusing more on is um, revenue, generating enough revenue to be able to carry out projects and also, if, if, what's it called? Finance our interest, Abi. Mm. You know, pay interest on our, most of our loans that we have taken in the past. So I know we will end up at loans. I believe that the loans should be targeted at core life-changing policies or projects that will turn us turn things around. If each state who they have, you know, um, crude in them, the oil-producing states, about how many of them, 12 of them, yeah. start to have refineries to refine, so that it's from there that the tank farms will be, will be located and be exporting products across the country from. We will be able to more than halfway meet this. Every of our problem goes and starts from the cost yeah. of pre uh, pre uh, petrol and how it's you know used across the country in our different businesses. Manufacturing is closing down because diesel, of course, is so expensive. People are co uh, complaining because transporting uh, uh, products are largely controlled by the cost of diesel yeah. or petrol. So we need this, and God in His mercies gave us abundance of crude. We cannot continue to allow, whether it is on seen hands or on foreseen hands, tell us that we cannot have our own refineries and that we cannot even have it government-owned. Government, yeah. State governments can start to own them. If the 12 states are the ones selling the crude, we will, it will be better than where we are right now. Okay, we have whatever to that up. person is, whoever that person me, is that thinks that we cannot yeah. own our refineries or government cannot do them is wrong. They are doing it in Saudi and they are doing it in other oil-producing countries and they are doing better. And we can't keep up. 
Well, and then we have to wrap up very soon. Uh, let me let us all have the last word here. <laughs> and he wants to <laughs> jump in. <laughs> Nima, well, I, I agree with almost everything you've said, but I still think that maybe we should not be too much, we should not concentrate too much on food anymore. Yes, there's still a viable source of uh, revenue for the country and the nation as at large, but I don't buy that idea of um, between the you know, 12 states to man their refinery or to develop their own oil, you know, refine their own oil. That is just a recipe for chaos. If one government on its own cannot manage 12 states, the oil in 12 states, mm. you now want 12 states individually to yeah. control their resources, their oil resources, that is recipe for disaster, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Let me just All right, we have to, we have to wrap up. Let, yeah, me take... let me just quickly clarify that, you know, this, what this takes care of is the long level of pipelines that will be vandalized. They will, locate, they will be controlled within a, lo uh, a location, and that's easier. Mm. But, you know, the pipelines have to travel. The pipeline travel come. They, they refine crude for Lagos. Yeah. Pipelines are being vandalized in Lagos here, and people are becoming... Wealthy. So there are Not pros and cons it. on both of yeah, pros and cons. Yeah. With, everything. Yeah. With everything. With everything. I'm reading comments from Mr. Fry. I wanted to get his name correctly. Mr. Francis Ogbimi. Yeah, I was said on WhatsApp. So just so that I, he get, gets credit for the comments I've made. Francis Ogbimi, thank you for those comments you've uh, put on the group. Um, I think that's all we can yeah. take on today's show. But really, much, in a nutshell, it was just to express Nigerians' pains to Mr. President. A lot's been happening. Um, um, government keeps assuring us that it's going to get better. And I just cannot see the light at the end of this tunnel just yet. But we need, uh, although Nima says there's communication, which I agree, at certain levels there is, but at other levels too, there aren't enough communications going mm. out there. So please, government should ensure that food is available, information is available, and you are also, we need to, we need to talk about tightening their belts. We shouldn't see yes, you. We shouldn't see you. Party and all that stuff. Okay, that's all we can take. This is my shout in my ears. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now. I'm sorry, Mr. Kola.